Okay. Hey everybody. Today we are making one more battery cable. Uh, we just finished balancing our battery or charging our batteries. Now we're about to balance them. To do that, I need one more battery cable. Um, this is two gauge battery cable. I did not buy the, the wire from a solar company because that wire is junk. It's usually got about 25 to 30 strands. They're tin coated. They don't transmit electricity very well. And this is more than a thousand strands, pure copper, 99.99% pure copper, two gauge wire. I went ahead and bought a large gauge wire crimper. I'll show you how these are used in a second. A large gauge wire cutter. And trust me, you're gonna need this. And instead of the tin covered terminals from that came with all of the solar stuff, I went ahead and upgraded to pure copper. Um, it just gets a better transmission. It has less resistance. You don't have as much problems with it, especially with heat. So we are going to measure this out. It is pretty important to get the cables as close to length as possible. One or two millimeters off, it's not gonna make a big deal. Four or five inches off, you're gonna have problems. It's not gonna be as efficient as it should be. So to use these cutters, you just open it big enough to get it in the wire in. And of course you can hear our dog growling at the dogs growling at each other behind us. And you push and squeeze and it snips over. And then you're left with a nice clean cut. Now this is a trick I picked up from years of doing car audio of using cutters to be my wire stripper. So I'm just going to get that in there so that it's just tight enough to where it just goes through the shielding and then I spin it. And as you push it off, you get a nice open thing like that. Now, this kit came with a big roll of, of heat shrink. So we're gonna cut two pieces of heat shrink off. Nice inch and a half, two inches. And just to make it look professional, I'm gonna try and measure them up as close as possible. There we go. Now the side that I did not strip, oh, look at that, little bit of inner shielding there. Pull that off. Side that I did not strip, I'm gonna send the heat shrink tubing down that. Because once you get the terminals on, this heat shrink tubing will not fit over the terminals. Some of the heat shrink tubing will, this one won't. You just have to figure that out or just preset it. Now, if you just kind of massage the wires around, I prefer a clockwise motion, right hand twist. It helps get the ends of the wires curled in. Of course, these are belled, so it helps curl it in anyway. Slides right over like that. And you can see the shielding is perfectly matched to the exposed wire. Now, these crimpers have a two on them right here, but you can actually turn these to get a different course now I can't do it it's like I'm on TV I can't do it there's a one gauge there's an eight gauge so it goes all the way from eight gauge to two gauge as far as the crimpers go and there's little numbers I don't know if you can see those or not they're pretty small we're going to open these jaws up we're going to stick the crimp into it so that it's approximately halfway okay you don't want it at either end, you want it kind of in the middle. And then you just push. And yeah, you gotta put some effort into it. Especially with these bigger wires. You end up with a crimp that looks like that. And that is holding on really, really tight. Then we take the heat shrink tubing. We put it over just to where the neck starts to bend. It looks like this tubing can actually go over the terminals. 
You can use a match. That's pretty chintzy. You can use a lighter, but you're going to burn your thumb. You can use a heat gun, which is awesome, or you can do map gas. And you can see it just takes a few seconds all the way around, shrinks up nice and tight, and you get a very professional looking connection. And now we're going to do the other end. And then we'll film what we're doing this for on our battery array and how we're going to hook them up. There we go. Actually, that's not enough. See, even people that do this a lot don't hit it the first time every time. One thing I will say, even if you're just doing the 10 gauge on the roof for the solar panels to the junction box, don't use the wire that comes with the system. It is so junk that once I switched it to a solid, good quality 10 gauge power wire, we saw 50 watts of input more using good quality wire than we did from the junk wire that you can get from all the companies. They all sell the same junk wire. Now, I like to make sure that the bottoms of my terminals match as close as possible. That way there's less twist in the wire. And when you lay the wire out negative to negative, you get a nice flat wire and it's not all twisted up and weird looking has absolutely nothing to do with the function. It's honestly just to make it pretty. <laughs> and of course, we're gonna put that back in the crimper. We get it nice and halfway, and then push down. And there's our nice solid crimp. And again, that is not moving. So put our heat shrink tubing on. Again, just at the shoulder. And here we go. Now, if you overdo it, you'll know immediately because it'll start smoking, which means you gotta try again. You gotta cut it off, put more on, try it again. The last thing you wanna do is get that heat shrink tubing brittle because if it flakes off and breaks off, all of the protective properties are gone. So, with that being done, that's the last cable I needed.